tries to maintain consistency across all your web pages. When you're creating a site, you may want all pages to have the same look and feel, even if they have different images and text. To do this, you can create a template. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to create a Dreamweaver template, as well as how to use other useful features to help maintain consistency across your websites. There are several ways that you can use templates to create websites. You can create your own template, as you'll learn to do in this lesson. You can also download templates online. Some are free and some you'll have to purchase. You can download Dreamweaver templates, but you can also download HTML and CSS templates. However, WordPress or Flash templates won't work in Dreamweaver. You'll find that some templates are really easy to edit while others are harder. It's trial and error depending on your skill level. When you're creating a lot of pages that will share a lot of the same features, using a template saves time and work. In fact, it's recommended that you use a template if you're creating a site with more than just a few pages. You can create a template that contains your logo, site navigation, and styles for the colors and fonts so that you don't have to recreate each aspect every time you create a new page. It's just as easy to create a template page in Dreamweaver as it is to create a new page. You can create an HTML template page by using the New Document dialog box. See here, it gives you the option to create a template. In addition, you can save any page you've already created as a template by going to File, Save As, and then saving it as a template file. Dreamweaver templates are saved with the file extension .dwt. They must be saved in a folder named Templates at the root level of the site. Don't worry though, when you create your first template, Dreamweaver creates a templates folder for you and stores your templates in the folder. So to create a new template, go to File, New, and you'll now see the New Document dialog box. Click Blank Template. In the Template Type list, choose HTML Template. Choose None in the Layout area to create a blank page. You can also select a pre-designed CSS layout. And just as with your HTML files, you have different layouts to choose from here. Once you have what you want, Click the Create button, and then go to File, Save. And a note to CC users, the steps to create a template page in Dreamweaver CC are slightly different. Go to File, New, select a blank page, then choose an HTML template in the page type list. Choose a layout in the layout area, click the Create button, and go to File, Save. Now you can create a design for your page by adding images, text, as well as other elements. Now when you save a document as a template, you can also specify editable and uneditable regions. An uneditable region is a locked region. This means that changes must be made in the original template and cannot be changed in the page itself. Editable regions contain content that is editable in the specific pages. The table here shows the difference between editable and uneditable or locked regions of a page in order to help you better understand it. Content in editable regions will only be added to a new page as it's created, and when it's updated, locked regions will be changed, but editable regions will not. On the other hand, uneditable or locked regions will be updated to all HTML pages using this template, not just the unique website open in Dreamweaver. When updated, all pages using this template will show changes made to the locked region. By default, all areas of the template are uneditable when you create the template. This means when you open the template to use it, you won't be able to edit any part of the template. It's like it's locked. To create an editable region, select any text block, image, or content area. Then go to Insert, Template Objects, and select Editable Region. And a note to CC users, in CC you'll go to Insert, Template, Editable Region. Give your region a name and then click OK. You can see the box has appeared around it and now we can edit this region. When you finish designing the page and have specified your editable regions, save your file. Now let's talk about the Dreamweaver library. A library is a Dreamweaver file that contains all the assets, files, images, and so forth 
that you put in your document and on your web page. These assets are called library items. What makes the library so convenient is that when you edit one asset in the library, you can automatically update all the pages that contain that asset. Your library items are stored in your library within the local root folder for each site that you create. This means that each site you create in Dreamweaver has its own library. Library items can be created from any aspect or element in the body of a document. This includes text, forms, tables, applets, plugins, navigation bars, images, and so forth. You must create library items in order for them to be stored in the library. To do so, go to the library by going to the Assets panel, which is under Window, Assets. Click the icon here that looks like an open book. That's your library icon. And then select the object that you want added to the library and drag it into the library category. You can also click the new library button at the bottom of the panel. Now whenever you use a library item in your document, Dreamweaver inserts a link to it in the web page. To make that easier to understand, Dreamweaver inserts the HTML source code for the item into the document, then adds a comment that contains a reference to the original item. This is why it's possible to update all instances of the library item. So to insert a library item into your document, first click the document to create an insertion point. So if I wanted it right here, and then make sure your library icon is selected in the assets panel, select the library item and click insert. You can see the item that we added earlier has been easily inserted at our insertion point. Now as far as editing a library item, remember that when you update a library item, you can also update all instances of it within your document. To edit a library item, once again go back to your library in the Assets panel, select the item that you want to edit, and double click. Here a new window opens. You can complete all your edits, for example if I wanted to change the size. Your edits will appear as inline style. When you're finished, save the file. And then you'll be asked if you want to update all instances of the library item in your document. And if we go back to our document template, you can see that the edits we made have now been changed. Now let's talk a little bit about the Assets panel. You use the Assets panel to manage and view your assets within a current site. The panel only shows assets associated with the active document. You can view your assets in two different ways. Site list shows all assets on your site. This includes colors and URLs. The favorites list shows only assets that you've selected. You can use the radio buttons to switch between these two views. Assets fall into different categories which are listed here on the side. You can click on the category to view all assets within it. The Assets icons appear vertically down the left side of the Assets panel. So let's start with Images. Images include GIF, JPEG, or PNG. Colors includes all the colors used in your documents and style sheets. It includes the colors of the text, backgrounds, and links. URLs will show all the links in your documents linking to outside sources. These links include FTP, Gopher, HTTP, HTTPS, JavaScript, email, and local file links. Flash will show you any files on your web page that are saved in the SWF format. Shockwave shows you Adobe Shockwave files. Movies will include QuickTime or MPEG files. Scripts applies only to JavaScript or VBS script files. HTML files do not appear anywhere in the Assets panel. Templates include page layouts that are used on multiple pages, and your library items, which we've already discussed. Now you can also use another website or graphic to create your web page. When you do this, you will trace the other design, placing yours on top of it. This can make creating a design you want much easier. So to do this, start a new blank HTML page. Then click on Page Properties in the Property Inspector and go to the Tracing Image category. Browse your computer to find the image that you want. And then set the image transparency, or how dark it will appear on your page. If you're going to trace over it, you'll want it to appear lighter. Almost like tracing paper you used when you were a kid. 
I'd recommend setting it at 50% or lower. Then click OK. That's now on the background of your HTML page. And when you're creating your HTML in your layout, you can simply trace over it. When you're tracing a website layout, set all margins and padding to zero so that the images will line up completely. And when you're finished, you can simply remove the tracing image by deleting that from the code. You can see that it's now gone. There may also be times where you want to write text over an image. You can do this using the tracing images feature as well. So go back in, tracing image, and select your picture. And for this, you'll want a darker transparency, but you can move it down a little bit. Click OK, and your image will appear in your document. And now, you'll be able to write text over the image.